Right, so today I'd like to give you a quick tour or a quick overview of iron metabolism just to give you a general idea of the major steps uh, by which the body processes and uses iron. So the first step of course would be the, to look at how, where iron comes from and of course we get iron from our diet and let's just say that this here would be food and the little blue dots inside would be the iron. So as the iron, you eat your food, it comes into your body, the body will then break up the food and remove the iron from the food and so now you will have free iron that can be taken up through the duodenal cells which line the, the gastrointestinal uh, wall and these molecules can be absorbed so there's a lot of interesting processes happening here but let's just say that iron moves through the duodenal cells some of the iron this is important will stay inside the duodenal cells we'll just draw them there as little dots and remember this because we're going to come back to that at the end and then once they are absorbed through little iron doors situated on this wall they are carried around the body on these little molecules that I've drawn in green and we call those molecules transferrin okay so that's important we'll just write that here transferrin transferrin so you can see here trans as in transport ferrin as in iron hey so the, these are the transporters of iron now these transferrin molecules will now carry the iron around the body and basically deliver it wherever it is needed most of the iron is needed and used by the bone marrow where it will be taken up by the precursors of red blood cells and incorporated into hemoglobin so hemoglobin hp that is needed to carry oxygen will take up the iron and as you are well aware the red blood cells that are the um, final adult stage of development will be full of hemoglobin and will carry a lot of iron and these red blood cells once they are formed will go into the bloodstream let's just draw them here they're actually much bigger relative to the transferrin of course but now these red blood cells will start moving around the body and they'll go around and around carrying oxygen from the lungs to all the different organs in the body and they can do this for about 120 days after which they are too old to continue their job and the spleen that I've drawn down here, so this here is the spleen. The spleen has a way of testing red blood cells and the spleen can actually through different mechanisms figure out that the red blood cells are now old. And once that happens, the spleen through these cells, um, which we call macrophages, will take in the red blood cells, the old red blood cells of course, not the young ones, the old ones, and literally break them up into pieces. So let's just write that here. So these, so these cells we said are macrophages, and you can hear from the name macrophage. Macro means big, phage refers to eating, so these are the big eaters, macrophages, big eaters. Now, what happens with these old red blood cells, because see the body will waste as little as it can, it will break down the red blood cells into proteins and minerals and everything, and then the iron that was in the red blood cells, so let's just draw the blue, our little blue dots again, so the iron in the red blood cells can now be recirculated. So it can move out of the macrophage, find a seat on one of these transferrin molecules, or many transferrin molecules of course, 
and be carried around the body again where it can be reused to make more red blood cells. Now of course iron is not only used for the production of red blood cells it is used in many other organ tissues as well. It's actually necessary in almost every cell of the body. One of the parts of the body that uses quite a lot of iron for instance is um, muscle tissue. So, but we're not focusing on all that now. We're going to focus on the major steps here. So let's just see what we've got so far. On this side we had intake of iron. So intake. Uh, no, that is not right. So intake. On this side we have absorption. Okay, we'll just say absorption here. Then we've got transport. And then um, here you saw that the, 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 red, the iron was taken up to be used for production. The red cells are recycled. Iron is released back into the body. And then if there's any excess in iron, too much, then that excess iron can be stored in the liver. And in the liver, there are specialized molecules for iron storage. We'll just draw them here in, in purple. And these molecules are called ferritin. And these are little protein capsules that can store a lot of iron molecules inside them. Now I want you to notice something. You can see that everywhere iron goes, it is carried or stored or kept in some other protein or in something else. The reason for this is simple. Free iron is toxic to the body. If we had iron everywhere here in the bloodstream. This free iron will be taken up by cells in the body and will cause a lot of damage. So the body tries to prevent that by carrying the iron on transferrin when it's inside the cells, storing it in ferritin. This can happen in many organs. And as far as possible, the body will try to prevent um, having any free iron floating around. Some diseases or some conditions this can happen um, but we'll talk about that in another video so then so so we, we talked about storage here just write that storage but then the question is how does the body get rid of any iron because you can't just take in iron forever and not lose some well this is actually important because the way the the body cannot really actively control its loss of iron the way to do that is to actually release these cells in the gastrointestinal tract and you know that these cells are continuously replaced and then removed. They literally um, are removed from the body and they go out in the stool and because they are filled with iron molecules See, like I mentioned here, that's why I said in the beginning these little iron molecules inside the duodenal cells are important. Um, they, when they are lost or when they desquamate, as we say, iron is lost with them. Now the same, for instance, can happen with cells from the skin that can also contain iron and are also lost over time. So you would lose a little bit of iron through that mechanisms, mechanism. Now in females, of course, um, menstruation will lead to uh, more loss of iron as well. And therefore, in females, they also have to absorb a little bit more iron to maintain um, an adequate iron status. So these are the major steps in iron metabolism. I'm looking forward to doing more videos where I will explain uh, the details about intake, absorption, transport, usage of iron, how red cells are recycled, how the storage works, and also some details about transferrin and ferritin and all these things that I think you may find very interesting. So there you have it, the major steps of iron metabolism, intake, absorption, transport, storage, and loss.